Okay, so on this week's Fox Friday, I thought I'd walk you through the internals of a uh, Fox ESS inverter. This is the AC charging equivalent of a H1. So this is an AC1 5.0, um, exactly the same as a H1 5 kilowatt model, with the difference being that the PV inputs are all blanked off. There's no PV isolator. Uh, you just have battery terminals and an AC terminal. And um, it is just a battery, uh, a battery system that uh, covers your house load. So this would be an ideal system for someone who already has existing solar and is looking to add an AC coupled system uh, or someone that uh, is looking to expand uh, what they have already. So I've gone ahead and I've removed the six uh, five millimeter bolts that they already have. Again, I'm doing this on a test system, so this isn't being used in operation. I use it to apply updates to, um, to test changes, to test configuration, etc. So uh, by opening yours, you will void your warranty. There is a sticker on the side that very clearly gets broken once you lift the lid. I've also prepared this a little bit to provide a slightly better uh, video. So what we'll notice by opening it, first of all, there's a lot going on. I'll just walk through what we see. So first of all, there's a very, well, one, there's the sticker that you void by opening it. Uh, there's a very thick uh, rubberized weatherproof gasket going around the edge. That's really good. That's, um, that's, all, that's some sort of adhesive holding on the other side, but it's a big spongy uh, and that interfaces on the inside of this lip. So you can see that there's actually a step. So that will all keep it nice and uh, IP rated. There's a data connection going to the front screen. I've just uh, popped that out from this uh, connector here, just so I can get the lid out of the way for this video. What I was impressed uh, looking at the, the internals of the Fox system is that you'll notice that all of the connectors are also, not only have they got a locking mechanism with these these uh, locking arms, let's see if I get a better view. So these locking arms kind of reminds me of the IDE cables of the day, uh, but they've also added a zip tie, cable tie around the connectors. I suppose that keeps it uh, together during transport, etc. stop cables from going loose. So wherever they've got a data ribbon, they've added one of these white zip ties, fantastic. Um, another word of caution, you can see some very large capacitors in here. I've completely discharged this unit and made sure that it's safe to work on. And I, my set, and the desk, that I've got it sat on a, an earthing plate as well. So this isn't something that I would want to encourage, but a lot of you have seen these boxes on your wall, in your garage, in your loft, and wonder what's behind the faceplate. So this is just a bit of an explanation uh, into it and just um, to have a look over it as an electrical engineer, the sort of quality of the connections. So I'm really impressed the fact that they are belts and braces by putting it's just a simple solution like a cable tie over data ribbons to stop them from working their way out. All of the other connectors typically, see if I can get that to focus, have a locking connector. We've talked about fans and cooling. So the little whirling you can hear when these uh, when these fans are absolute when these inverters are maxed out over fifty odd Celsius, this is the fan you can you can hear. There's the details of that fan. I'll pause on that for a second as well, so you can have a look at it. Uh, that fan traces this black cable underneath this board, so I can't quite see the fan header, but I imagine. It's, I imagine it's going to be something that's not only replaceable but possible to um, to get a, a higher quality fan if you want to go down the route of um, some people upgrade fans inside of internet routers and things like that to make them more powerful and quieter. Uh, but yeah, there is there is a fan. I've only ever heard it running when this inverter is at its top operating temperature, which I believe is around fifty degrees Celsius. Um, it's missing all of the solar gubbings, so I'd expect to see on this side the solar connections, the MPPT trackers, all of that will, looks like it solders onto these connections here. So this area will be populated 
if this was a H1. Um, what else to really call out? Just everything is really well connected. So on this side, you've got the DC to AC conversion going on uh, behind the back. So the, all these large thick cables go into this sort of secondary piece. And you can see that on the inverter side, this, this module here appears to be where the uh, DC to AC conversion is happening. You can see the fins that keep this cool, the place where um, what's the, the Wi-Fi data stick there. This is an older model, so Generation 1, so it has Ethernet, although that's been disabled on newer firmwares. That's the COM port connection there, and obviously the battery connection and with all these uh, PV inputs being blanked off. So the mains AC will come in from this side, go to those terminals. They have a, a plug that connects to that. Uh, go through all of this. It looks like it terminates in the thicker wires if you follow them. Go through this capacitor block, but also go into that module on the back. See if we can see anything under here. Again, the cable ties holding all the, the daughter boards together. But yeah, it's um it all looks very well laid out. It's all PCBs. You'll notice that the PCBs have got that sort of protective resin coat over the top of them as well. There's some dip switches here that are um sealed off looks like a couple of them have actually been pierced from the factory so i'm not sure what that is whether that's for testing or not or if this this is this was a new to me ac charger that i was using uh, on one of my projects and is now surplus so i've been using it as a test bed as i've said but if there's anything i'll try and zoom out give you a bit of a top down view of all the components but it does seem like a very well integrated system all the connectors are all are all taught to spec sleeving labeling additional um, adhesive and putty around areas so it's, it does look like a very high quality internal build and obviously to answer the question are they completely fanless uh, well, no, there is a fan there when it operates at its highest end. I did just notice something interesting, and that's that the Ethernet port on the outside is actually just a pass-through to an Ethernet connection here. So I'll have to have a look at the. Um, I'll have to have a look at uh, something that's a bit newer that doesn't have an Ethernet port on the uh, the actual external i wonder if the internal ethernet ports there not that it makes a lot of difference because um, it's disabled at a software level in the newer firmwares but just it's just always interesting to see um what's going on so if there's anything you can see these are the battery connectors so it goes through got a little farad block here going straight into the dc plus dc negative but yeah really high quality and this has been in um, an outbuilding and you can see that it's absolutely dust free damp free no signs of corrosion so that that main seal around the enclosure seems to be doing its job you can even look at the the welding I and mean, it's really high quality it's obviously a machine weld but really high quality welding all the way throughout the enclosure I'll try and get some of the the chip names as well. Some people like to look those up. Some caps, some dies, some relays. These don't seem to have anything labeled on them. But yeah, if you're interested what lies behind a H1 or an AC1 inverter, it's gonna look very similar to this. Thanks for watching.